the Lord be with you and, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Lord. Chapter 3, verses 14 to 21. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned. Because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the verdict that the light came into the world. But people preferred darkness to light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come towards the light so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to the light so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. My dear sisters and brothers, where is our hope? Whenever thoughts of hopelessness overwhelm us, we look down into every problem everything wrong going around us. And we ask the question, where is our hope? The gospel today gives us a very clear answer. Our hope is not down below. Our hope comes from on high. When I am lifted up, Jesus said, and you look to me, I will draw all men and women to myself. Now, this is a word Jesus says three times in the Gospel of John. When I am lifted up, I will draw all men and women to myself. I am the hope. I will be lifted up as the hope. Look up to me and you will be saved. You know, my dear sisters and brothers, Moses compares himself to the serpent lifted up in the desert. And we read about that in the book of Numbers, chapter 21. God asked Moses, lift up a bronze serpent. Everyone who looks at it will be saved. The context was this. The people were on their way from Egypt, the land of slavery, to the promised 
land of freedom and salvation. But this was a stiff-necked people. As God said about them every now and then. They knew the mighty power of God. They were told they were chosen in a very special way. And God intervened with a mighty arm delivering them from the powers of Egypt. God cut open the sea to find a way for them in the midst of waters. When they were hungry, they were given manna in the desert. When they were thirsty, the rocks were burst open for water to gush forth. At night, they were led by a pillar of fire. Daytime, when the sun was too hot, they were overshadowed by a cloud. God protected them. God provided for every need of theirs. And yet, they rebelled against God. And that rebellion brought in disaster. Not that God was punishing them, but they turned away from God. If you turn away from light, where are you? You're in darkness. And they were in darkness of despair. They began to murmur. They began to rebel. Eating manna, they said, we are tired disgusted with this wretched food. They began to long for the flesh pots of slavery in Egypt. A stiff-necked people and some leaders, leaders always come up in rebellion. Some leaders led the people away in rebellion against Moses and Aaron because of that terrible sin there was the consequence sin always has a consequence by nature sin is disaster sin brings in ruin and all the ruin all the boredom, all the destruction in our life, in our family, is due to the sin in us. The serpents in Hor, the cert of Hor. From Hor, they were going by the side of the Dead Sea to the Promised Land. The cert sprang up. Serpents biting them. Then Moses began to plead with God, O oh God, your people, have mercy on them. And God said, lift up a bronze serpent. Everyone who looks at it should remember the power of my salvation. And they will be healed and saved. It's exactly what happened. Now, quoting this event, Jesus is saying three times, the Son of Man will be lifted up to draw everyone to myself. And those who believe in me will be saved. The only way of salvation is to turn to him lifted up. Now, Bible scholars tell us something very special. Jesus changed a little the Old Testament verse. In the Old Testament, book of Numbers, chapter 21, 
but moses was asked to do was to mount a serpent on a pole and jesus replaced that word mount by the word raised up lifted up what's the difference raised up in the midst of the people lifted up in glory raising up lifting up is always in glory the cross of jesus according to the gospel of john is the source of glory son of man lifted up for what that we may look at him that we may not perish that's why jesus said god so loved the world you shall know this god has taken the ultimate sacrifice of giving his own son when you see the cross you shall know this this is a sacrifice of love the ultimate sacrifice of the love and care of the father the father lifted up jesus that the so believe in him might not be lost this is our hope in whatever situation we are whatever is going wrong around us and with us in our family we look to him we raise our eyes to him we do not look down on the problems moses looked down at the seashore and saw the waves raging simon peter looked down and saw the waves coming to destroy him and that's when jesus called him moses simon look up they looked up to god and when they looked up to god they were saved and today the invitation we know we are sinful a family is sinful there's much sin and rebellion in our hearts in our family in the world around us but what we need to look at is not down at the destruction what we need to do is to look up in hope in faith those who believe in him look up to him in faith as psalm 34 tells us look up to him your faces will be radiant at every moment of depression at every moment of boredom at every moment when temptations challenge us and we seem to feel sad and overwhelmed with despair we need to look up look up to him the cross is raised up what the cross reminds us is not the defeat of god it's not the death of god but the resurrection the victory of love look up to him there are moments when failures stare into our eyes there are moments our past haunts us there are moments challenges threaten us and we look at the challenges at the problems at the temptations we looking down no look up lifted up son of god is lifted up to save us no sin no temptation is too powerful for us no sickness is too destructive for us because the son of god is lifted up in the midst of it all for us to look up to and then jesus sounds a word of caution 
And the caution is this. This is the verdict. Verse 19. This is the verdict. That the light came into the world. Hope came into the world. Love came into the world. Salvation came into the world. The cross is lifted up, promising us salvation. But men and women, people, preferred darkness to light. Because their works were wicked. We know our works are wicked. We are not able to rise up to the glory promised us, the glory of the children of God. But we shall never, never languish in despair. We shall look up to him in faith, in hope. And we will be saved. He's the salvation. A great hope given to us today by the Lord. And that's why the Lord repeated it thrice in the Gospel of John. When I'm lifted up, I will attract, draw all men and women to myself. I'm lifted up that you may believe in me. Everyone who believes in the Son will be saved. Let our hearts be filled with this hope today. Hope in the love of God. The cross. The cross is the symbol of love. The ultimate God has done for us. We shall not look at the cross and lament and grieve. We shall look at the cross and believe how much I am loved. This is how I'm loved. And St. Paul tells us, Romans 8, 32, if God did not spare his own son when it came to our salvation, will this God deny anything to us? Will this God deny anything at the moments of our need, at the moments of our temptations, at the moments of our troubles, at the moments people go against us, at the moments, difficult moments of life, Will this God deny anything to us? Love is manifested on the cross to the highest degree. There could not be a degree higher than that. That's our hope. This God will not deny anything to us. Let's believe in this love. As St. John tells us, love has appeared and we believe in his love. We are people chosen and privileged to believe in love. We are not believing in an idea. We are not believing in a concept. We are not believing in a power. We are believing in love. The cross should reveal to us, proclaim to us that love. We believe in him. We hold on to him. That we will never be left alone. We will not be destroyed. Amen.